Hello and welcome to the Cabin Boy Knits Woolcast, coming to you deep from the Canadian forest. This is Christopher. And this is the other guy. Jamie. We have a bunch of interesting things to talk about this episode, starting with the finished object, the Arnie and Carlos finished object. And we're going to talk about mohair and angora rabbits. And I have a whip. I have an A-whip. A what? It's called an A-whip. And I have a cow. A what? A cow. A K-A-L. Okay, and, and what's in your dye pot? <laughs> yeah, we're going to check that as, as well. And we've got a whole bunch of wool to talk about. So sit back, grab your favorite drink, and we'll tell you our story. Just want to thank everyone for sending in your comments. We've been getting a lot of comments, especially around a woman that keeps popping up in our episodes. Who's that? Well, it's really interesting because there's a lot of theories on who this person is. Oh, you mean like it's the other woman? The other woman, yes. That's, <laughs> well, if that's, yeah, I guess if that's her name. But some people think she's a, an Olympian, past Olympian, because we saw her snowshoeing in heels. Who does that? No idea. And then there are other theories that she was beamed up to an alien ship and dropped into the cabin. I think I recall something happening in Moon, Moonbeam. Moonbeam in Ontario. Yep. And okay. then other people think that she looks a lot like Anne of Green Gables. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. It was the red hair that was very... She had woolly hair. She did have woolly hair. Yeah, yeah. And then there's some people that think she looks a lot like you. A lot, Is there of, any... I look, a lot of people look like me. Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah, well, I, I would agree with that. I get that a lot. <laughs> anyway, we're going to try to figure it out. but And maybe she'll be popping up in, in future episodes as well. You but she's generated never... a lot of chatter. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have mail. Okay. Yes. So let's get right into the mail. Sure. Now, th we received some mail. Well, Cabin Boy Nicks. Well, I, I purchased it, so that's why we received it. But um, I wanted to open this up, and Jamie said, no, save it for the show. Well, yeah, we've got to save the mail when we get it. It's very difficult for me to look at this There's all a week. very special message on it. There is. I, well, I can't see the light's not bright enough. It says, thank you. Can you read it? Yeah, that's what glasses are for. <laughs> She's so vain. <laughs> Just call me Carla Simon. I know. It's not always about you. <laughs> about you, about you. Okay. Can you read Thank it? Thank you so much for supporting us. Thomas and Cody and Silas. Oh, oh excellent. And who are they? Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about this before we open it up. Okay. So you have to wait about a minute longer. I was listening to a podcast uh, about a year and a half ago, and it was called Local Wool, episode yes. 13. Okay. And there was a guy interviewed, and it was one of the Foggy Bottoms Boys, and their farmers. Okay. I think they, the title of the episode was Two Farmers, no, Two Men and a Tiny Farmer. That's what it was called. Oh, Tiny Farmer, yes. And so I was listening to this podcast and I thought it was great. The Foggy Bottoms boys are members of the Fiber Shed in California, the original Fiber Shed. Mm -hmm. We're members of Fiber Shed, Upper Canada Fiber Shed. Okay. And I just love their story and the way that they farm and their wool is uh, is GOTS certified. So that is global. GOTS. 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 It's my, it's my Scarborough accent again. It's GOTS. So it's global organic textile standard. Okay. Do you know what that is? It's a standard. It's a standard. And it's and a it, good one. It's a, but it's a very strict standard to, to meet. Oh. And so um, they look at, which is really interesting. So when you think about the yarn and you mm -hmm. see a label on it and it's GOTS 
verified or certified. Um, what that means is they have to have, if you go back to the sheep, they go further, they even spread that out further and they look at, okay, where were the sheep farmed? How are they farmed? And there's a, a lot of very strict standards on, on that. So the environment okay. is very important. How do they treat the environment? Um, how are the wool, how are they wool? How are the sheep raised? Um, are they given antibiotics? So there's a, there's a, a very strict criteria in order to, to become God certified. And then how is it processed after that? So uh, it, was, it was exciting to, to see that and to dive a little bit deeper into the God standard. And also because um, of the sheep that they raise as well, because you and, uh, well, you more so than myself with the rare breeds. Oh, yes. Yeah. And do you remember what kind of sheep they have? Rommeldale. Yeah, they do. And so, and that's an interesting story how they got that as well. So, yeah. And so, so they're in California. And I could tell you a bit about them. About the, the, the Foggy boys. Bottoms boys? Yes. Go ahead. So, did we read the message? It's from Cody and Thomas. Mm, yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> the yes. So. Yeah, but it's from Cody, Thomas, and, and Silas. Yes. And yeah. that's the tiny farmer. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, as you mentioned, they're from Northern California, from Humboldt County is where their farm is, and it's in the Eel River Valley, which is the foggy bottoms of the Eel River Valley. And so the local farmers nicknamed them. Is that like eel them. as in French eel or eel as in the animal? Eel as in an, oh. an eel. Okay. Yeah, an eel river. Okay. And so, and the local farmers, you know, neighbors and such nicknamed them the Foggy Bottoms Boys, because it just seemed very appropriate being from the area. Sure. <laughs> and so, and so, this is how the story goes, because I did, I, I, I checked out the story. So, picture it, 2007. Cody is a freshman at uh, the University of Oregon, and yep. it's very nearby the town of Union. And Thomas that's Thomas's hometown and he was in his last year of high school and I'm assuming he worked at the Starbucks because a mutual friend introduced them at Starbucks okay and later Thomas uh, studied in Denver and he was managing the Starbucks so I'm assuming he was working at Starbucks they met through a mutual friend um, I think it went well because by 2000 2016 they are married and so one of them studied, so Cody studied, um, he got his bachelor in rangeland management. Mm -hmm. And then when Thomas then went to university, he got a bachelor in business and marketing. So you could see how that perfect. combination, yeah, they, decide, perfect combination. they decide to come uh, back home to Cody's family farm that's been in the family since the 1860s. It's like the oh, wow. seventh generation. Yeah. Um, and they decide to make some changes. So it was already, it's, a, it's an organic dairy farm, but then they decide to add chickens and sheep and goats and rabbits. <laughs> and they at one time had a lot of rabbits. And grass fed beef. So therefore, here we have it. They sell all these magnificent food products, wool, and they also even have home furnishings. Um, but you left, gonna, out, you left out the most important addition. Well, I was going to mention okay. it. I think I know what you're going to say. <laughs> well, and we're going to talk about the wool as well, aren't we? Yeah, but that's not what I was going to talk about. You're yeah. going to talk about, I've got me some competition because Cody, what do they have? Foggy Bottoms Kitchen. <laughs> now, yeah, I'm like, oh, I need to check that out. And so... I found my kindred spirit. I think you Cody have absolutely. I think you have. I'm thinking he was quite funny. And in one episode, I need to quote him because it was, it was, it was. This is how this is how we connected. Because I'm watching this, and he's, are you going to quote him without blushing? <laughs> well, I think I'm blushing already. So <laughs> the Blitz tort. He makes this cake batter tort. Then it's going to be layered with some meringue. So as he's describing the meringue, and you need to whip that meringue until it forms a stiff peak. And it needs to be, stand straight up like a good man. <laughs> and I thought, oh my goodness, I practically <laughs> spit out the foam from my morning latte <laughs> as the whipped cream <laughs> formed on the peak. And he was, thought, he was somewhat blushing, and I have to say, I then blushed, and I thought... 
I need to up my game. So he kind of sounds like the Nigella of... <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> I was going to say that because you love Nigella. And Nigella I do love that. Nigella. Oh, and here we have... And I think she's, she's British, is she? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. And here we have... A, 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 um, <laughs> and off she carries on when she's making things. And she seems to be all about the sex appeal of whatever it is she's making. <laughs> so you blush when you watch Nigella. Yes, I do. She's a fan. <laughs> So back to Cody. She's a fan. <laughs> back to my Cody. <laughs> Christopher <Wait>. who? <laughs> this is, I said that before he did because, you know, if we're out and about somewhere and this one sees something or someone of interest, he's always like, Jamie who? <laughs> so it's not true. Christopher who? <laughs> so back to Cody and the boys. <laughs> What's the other one's name? Thomas. And Silas. Yes. <laughs> and the tiny farmer. Yes. Yeah. So they do have um, yeah, they have a great lifestyle on the go there. Quite impressive. And their pride, and their pride is, as you mentioned, I want to say this, because they're, they pride themselves, as you said, on raising everything um, ethically, organically, and they also work towards um, preserving the landscape for future de generations, yes. which includes their little family with the little tiny farmer. That's one of the future generations. Yep, excellent. Do you have the scissors? <laughs> I was listening. <laughs> scissors. Okay. Did he mention that the package was from Foggy Bottoms? <laughs> yeah, they even have their own tape. I know, I love it. Name on the tape. That's what I'm saying. We need to we need to up our game. Oh wow. Oh. Okay. That's so nice. Oh. It's a thank you. Oh, with the tiny farmer and the, yep. the family. That's nice. Thank you, Christopher. I don't see Jamie's name. <laughs> I don't like the five people. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Christopher, for supporting our sustainable fiber project. We are so happy Cabin Boy Knits can get to work with some California queer product. Thomas, Cody, and Silas. Oh! That is, oh! Okay, that <laughs> okay. is really so, special. I'll show the picture first. Oh my thing. gosh. That is so special. Seriously. And then there's a drawing inside of it by Silas. Mm -hmm. That's special. That is so special. Oh my goodness, where's the Kleenex? <laughs> <laughs> That's a Christ. <laughs> Oh my goodness. That's so sweet. That's really sweet. Oh my gosh. Okay. Let's see. All over this yarn from the Foggy Bottoms Boys. That okay. Is so special. The first two. Okay. I know what it is. You do? How do you know? <laughs> because I think that this is the, I'm not sure how you say it, but I'm thinking own, the own title yarn. Yeah. And it's spelled oh, o -H -O -H -N -E, it's really nice too. O H N E, like oh no, but I wonder if it's own. It's going to be own E, but I'm wondering if it's because they're. It's like a play on words at their own title, because they spell title T I T E L. But I wonder if it's a play on words being own. We'll title have to ask them because it's 100. percent This is 100 percent Rommeldale. Yeah. So maybe that's why because it's its own title. It's 100. percent Do you want to hold it while you're talking? Sure. Um, that is nice. Is it nice? So, you mentioned Rommeldale, we talked about it before. Two episodes ago. Yeah. And I could give you a quick recap, as quick as I can, on the Rommeldale. <laughs> Is that possible? <laughs> I'm going to do it quickly. I'm going to do a very okay. short version of the Rommeldale, because it's very, this one especially, because it's very special. Um, as well as the other one, but this one here. So the Rommeldale uh, is an American breed that was uh, developed beginning in 1915, when a certain Mr. Spencer, a sheep breeder, he went to the... Um, Pan Am, the Pan Am exhibition in San Francisco in 1915, and he bought a bunch of uh, New Zealand Romney, brought them back to his farm, and um, bred them with his Rambouillet, and then so became the Rommeldale. A yeah. little later, a little later, his, he, he sold it to another Mr. Sexton, and from there they really worked on developing the breed. And um, over over many years, they they just made it that much of a pure and very breed specific. Rommeldale. And this color specifically, um, we talked about the the, CV, the CV, CVM. CVM before. Yeah, California and, variegated mutant. Right. And that is because um, 
the Rommel is originally uh, white, but uh, in the 1960s, just this random gene appeared where they get this... The mut yeah, yeah. mutation? Well, when you say mutant, it sounds like there's some kind of alien <laughs> sheep. It's just a gene, a natural, a natural happening within the gene pool that, that surfaced, and it created a little more of a color pattern on the legs, more up so the legs and the underbelly and the face. And then it was these variegated sort of colors that you get um, these uh, reddish browns, grays to blacks. So this is, and in their words, this is um, like paying homage to their the variegated uh, type of sheep. Yeah. Which now, with the association, I mean, it's all basically Rommeldale. This is just nice. um, a part of the Rommeldale, so I think you just say Rommeldale sheep, period. And that is this wool it's right nice. here. It's really nice. I love this color. And, um, yeah. This is great. I've got so many ideas with this. And the thing, and the, you know, I want to just want to say one thing more about this wool because we know that it's it's quite soft and nice, and that's because it's, really it's nice. you know we we talk about the rambouillet and we mentioned over and over again, and that's because the rambouillet, as we know, is basically known as the French merino, and so this has a merino background to it in the rambouillet, and um, also with the Romney when they bred it, it's always to increase uh, productivity or to improve the stock breed and it was the the longer length of the Romney that gave the longer length to the Rambouillet and therefore longer length beautiful crimp to it yep. um, it yields more more fleece and overall it's just a better product in the end yeah excellent ready to move on yes that okay. was my short version okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we have enough uh, <laughs> One space card. on the disc for the, the long version. But, okay, the next one. Oh, I know what it is. That's nice. Wow. Let's see. Oh, oh. Isn't that lovely? Yes. That's really nice. Well, I'm not. I'm not... <laughs> the dog approves. He just. <laughs> Zan is underneath the, <laughs> underneath the table sleeping. Well, keeping this one's feet warm. <laughs> he's growling. Now. Is he growling or is he? I, I don't snoring. know if he's snoring. <laughs> I don't sure what he's doing. Okay, I'm 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 not 100% sure. This is between one of two. Okay. So, but, so it's super soft. It's super white, but it depends what else you, you have in there before I can tell what. Okay. This is. Well, I'll open up the next one. Oh, this looks nice. <laughs> okay, now I know what that is, and I know what this is. Okay. So, so which one do you want to talk about first? Um, okay. Well, do you know what that is? The Risk Ombridge. It is the risk umbrage. And this is the glitzy. Yeah. And it feels like there's wool. <laughs> <laughs> it's soft and very squishy. It's very, it's really nice. I can't stop squishing it. Here you go. Okay, well. Okay, well, let's talk about this one. So the risk umbrage is 90% Rommeldale with 10% satin angora. Not so, just angora, satin angora. It's, yes, and there's a difference, and I'm going to tell you why. Is there a silk out angora? I don't know about that, but nothing beats satin. <laughs> um, that's the softest and fluffiest yeah, of the yeah. Angora rabbits. So this, like I mentioned, ninety percent Romaldale, which we just talked about. So we know the softest and the and the background of it is is softness and niceness and all of right. that. Right now, add to that. Imagine and adding some Angora to it, which the satin Angora. Now the satin Angora, the um, American Ra Rabbit Breeders Association recognizes four types of angoras. So they have a French angora, English, the giant, and the satin, and the satin being the softest. Now, they were introduced to the United States in the early 1900s, angoras. Um, so they've been around for some time. And you can think about the French angora. I mean, the French royalty, they had them as pets in the mid-1700s. So you can imagine, like, you know, the rich, the, the angora rabbit was something prized at the time and still today. Have, now, you, have you ever seen a giant angora? I think so. <laughs> is it a somebody's wool shop? Oh, <laughs> I don't know if that's a giant one or I not. I think it is. Do it's you? giant. Well, it's because... the size of a freaking <laughs> pot-bellied pig. You're talking about Rosehaven yarn shop. <laughs> that thing came possibly out and I thought it was a, a movie star. I thought somebody had a control, a remote control. It was this stuffed animal coming out. Yeah. I, I think, I could be wrong, but it's pretty big. Yeah, a friend of mine had one and um, you'd walk over and you'd see this thing in their backyard and it was huge and it would be hopping it's around. Unbe and they're unbelievable animals. They're beautiful. It's yeah, they're I mean, gorgeous. Unbelievable. So I don't think the uh, satin angora is quite as big as that. But 
it is called satin for a reason because um, it is the softest and the most lustrous and shiny and that is because um, it was developed it was developed not that long ago there was a gentleman a, a famous breeder who who bred uh, an angora rabbit um, a satin rabbit with an angora and created this uh, tried to create the speed, but it, I, I don't think it worked out that well for him. So it was sort of left, that project was sort of left to the wayside. And it wasn't until 50 years later, that was in 1930. So 50 years later, this woman from Ottawa, she was Dutch origin. Um, her name was uh, Leopoldina Meyer. She bred uh, a French Angora with the satin rabbit. And you have the satin Angora. Wow. And uh, that, uh, I mean, all of the breeds from then on forward are go back to her creation of the satin angora rabbit. So you're saying it was created in Canada? It was, Ontario. Wow. Um, and so, yeah. And so if you imagine the Rommeldale and then just add that beautiful softness of angora in it, there you have Perfect. it. Perfect. That's really it. nice. Now. Now, yeah, the glitzy. Glitzy. Now, it's got your name written all over it. <laughs> it's shiny and lustrous, um, which comes with the territory because it's also Angora, but mohair. So it's Angora goat um, and a blend with, again, the white Rommeldale uh, with the white Angora goat. Yeah. And the reason, for those that I, I didn't really know this, I mean, some people, you know, you talk about Angora and mohair, and sometimes it could get confusing. Sure. But the Angora rabbit and then the mohair is the Angora goat. And the mohair comes from uh, an Arabic word meaning um, a cloth with uh, the cloth from the lustrous goat hair and that's mohair from the Angora goat. Um, so the Angora goats uh, were first introduced to the United States in the mid between the mid and the late 1800s. Uh, they've been around for thousands of years and they originate in Ankara, Turkey mm -hmm. and I think Angora comes from the word Ankara now, somebody said formerly called Angora, but it's more of a, I think, a slang take on the word Ankara, because you think Ankara, Angora, Angora. Sure, I'll buy I that. think that's how the word developed into Angora. Um, and as I mentioned, thousands of years has it used as a fiber, um, and right up until now into the United States. And Angora goats were only introduced into the UK in the 1980s. Oh, wow. So, um, yeah, wonderful fiber, this pure whiteness to it. Ultra soft, um, I imagine fantastic for anything close to the skin garment. That's nice. Blankets, Very nice. So forth. And oh, so yeah, it feels really nice. Yeah. That's awesome. So, thank you, Foggy Bottoms Boys, for this. I do want to mention one thing about the card as well. The reason why it's addressed to me is because I sent them a, a, a note, or I put the order through with just my name. So, next time I'll put both of our names. So then you can get a special note from Cody. <laughs> and I have to say, <laughs> We need to meet those boys only because I think there's some, you know, there's a, we have a bit in common, I would say, yes, or a lot yep. in common. Yeah. And they have this lifestyle that I imagine from what I can see and read, like this wonderful lifestyle that um, I think a visit to their farm would be amazing. Absolutely. And if they wanted yes. a Canadiana um, adventure to, um, you know, our little yarn production. <laughs> <laughs> factory in the middle of the woods I think would be a great exchange of of ideas and uh, yeah well and they've got a full plate like when you think about working on a farm Gosh. you are working many many hours so it, when they come up here we can put them to work in the in the studio just so that the they feel comfortable never gonna have to, so have to they come up here because <laughs> they have a child they've got a farm to run you know they can't let down this you know seventh generation farm down they that's they, right and they, they need all of their business acumen that they they learned and studied and, yeah. and their know-how they they need those those boys there at, at the Foggy Bar Bottoms um, farm. Well, who's going to be in the kitchen if they do come up here? Yeah, that's you right. You or Cody? Well, we're going to both be in the kitchen, <laughs> and we're going to share tips. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and as I mentioned, we need to up our game. Not only the kitchen, but um, we. Yeah. <laughs> okay, me. The royal we. I do. <laughs> anyway, thanks again. That's that's great. I love I love this. It's terrific. Are we ready to go peek in my dye pot? Okay, so what's in your dye pot? Well, I had a busy week. You did, because I know. Let's sit on. Let's sit. Let's stay on the gots. Gots. The thread. Okay. And what was the gots again? The the gots is the global. Organic. The oh, organic. It's organic. I was like, what the starts global, with G? Global. Yeah, organic. Well, organic starts with G. The global organic textile standards. The standard. Let's yeah. just call it the standard. 
the standard. Okay, so I was very interested in this and sourced some fiber uh, that has got um, approved or certified, and it is unbelievable. It is so soft. It's yeah, it's so I, beautiful. Oh my gosh! I have to agree. This is it's like satiny soft. It is very super soft. And so the beautiful and and so this is a um, it's just it's a um, what is it fingering weight. It's fingering weight. That's what I was trying to spit out. It's fingering weight, and it's merino, and it is super soft and squishy. Like this is, this is the squish test. Um, I decided to dye it with indigo, and so what I th thought I would do is do three stages of indigo: I had dark, a medium, and a light, and put it all in one skein. And so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to I'll knit it up uh, so that we can see what. It, so we can see what it looks like and um so we can see because i think that's important yeah and then it's going to be up on our website in um in our next store well this update. one has quite a consistency so you could really get an idea like, I, love I think it. this one here pretty much what you see here if you could see that like that um it's is what you're going to get in in, in something yeah. knitted. it's going to look like that yeah just like an even blend of all three shades of blue yeah, it's and it's so soft. You know what would be fantastic? Well, I mean, everybody gets creative, but I could imagine, um, imagine this, and if you wanted to combine it with a another shade, like one solid, or even a solid blue, a solid blue. or yeah, that's that what I thought—a solid blue yeah. with with this as as an accent, or yeah. or vice versa, an accent of a, another dark blue, or or a pure white cream cream colored with this would yeah. be amazing. Oh my gosh, it's so soft. It is okay. So that was that was that, <laughs> and then the next thing. Did I you want to say you, anything else about this? Yeah, what, I could tell you all about the history of the merino <laughs> sheep out of Spain from 1786 when it became Amberle. I'm sure you can. I'm not going to go there. We did that a million times. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's that one. <laughs> okay. The other thing I was doing was I was doing a how-to episode on how to dye yarn with, with avocado, and. Yeah. And there are a number of variables when you're doing natural dyeing that impact the color of your final product. Your, it impacts the color of your dye pot and um, what the yarn looks like in the end. And so what I thought I would do, one of the variables is the fluid that you use. So the water that you use. Okay. And so if I source it in Toronto versus um, in the forest, um, when we get our well water, or the rainwater. Because sometimes he hauls the water from Toronto to, just to make a <laughs> statement and a claim on making the wool seem differently. No, sometimes when I'm with it, when I'm in Toronto and I have withdrawals of natural dyeing, I bring all my stuff to Toronto if I'm there for a few days. Basically, it, it comes there. down to city water versus well water. That's right, yeah. So, and it doesn't have to be Toronto. It could be wherever you are. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> you're going to get tap water unless you're on a well. Uh, well, I know someone who uses salt water as well. So that you can use this. Oh, well, shoot. I didn't can all, think of that. We're yeah. nowhere near an ocean. That's a good point, though. Seriously. because yeah. Or lake you, water. We've got lake water here. We've got lake water. Yeah, lake direction. water. But salt yeah. water, I, it, that didn't even cross my mind because we're nowhere near. I, my first thought was, okay, add salt to the water, which is something you can do. But no, if you live near an ocean, you could just scoop out the salt water, you which will have a complete... Right there. I never even thought of that. So I, so I chose to use snow. So snow versus our well water. Snow water. And snow water and who so knew? who knew and so these are the two that were the darker one is the well water and the lighter one is the sorry the darker one is the snow and the lighter one is the well water okay and the cool thing about dyeing with avocados is that you don't need a mordant when you are dyeing your yarn because there is so much tannin in the pit mm -hmm. and in the skin so it's, it's so efficient. All you need is the skin and the pit, and you're ready to go. And, so, as, and as you mentioned, and then the only variable with these two, the lighter and the darker, was just the water. That was the only variable. Correct. Yeah. Which was just the natural snowfall versus what's in the groundwater. Yeah. And there you have the two yep. different colors to start. And okay. Then, and so do you know why this one's darker? No, and that one's lighter. This one's lighter because I used I put this one in, in the, and I didn't leave it in as long. So it was okay. just it was in at a shorter time and that was the well water so th those are the two from the well water uh, this one so I basically took the well water it looked like this and then I put it in an iron bath afterwards okay, yeah. uh, very quick iron bath just dunk it in and then pulled it out it was only in for about a minute it's amazing how the iron could 
completely change yeah. the color. You have to be really careful with iron because um, it can make your yarn brittle. I don't, and so well, I that's don't, never happened though. We've never come across like your yarn would go ruined. <laughs> I or have been known. So, I have been so known to get. No. No, I have been known to well, multitask like... and get carried away with other things and <laughs> forget about a dye. A dye bond. Yeah, and he put his <laughs> yarn in that in that iron bath and left it there. And when he came back, it was gone. No, it, it wasn't gone. It didn't That's dissolve. A, it, you make it seem like it's toxic or something. No, no, it's not toxic. It just it makes it brittle. So you, and you don't yeah, want it to be brittle. How long would that take to? I mean, it what, did, okay, not it, leave it in there for the it day. It depends on. Well, that's 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 what happened. I left it in for a day, and it wasn't. It wasn't. I wouldn't say it's brittle, but it's not. When you hold them together, this one would feel. The one you could feel a little different. Yeah. So, and so the answer to your question is it depends. It depends on how strong your yeah. iron bath is, yeah. um, and so the rule of thumb that I always use is. I get a bunch of questions on, on where does my iron bath come from. Yes. And so you're very familiar with the mason jars that are downstairs that have two thirds water and one third yeah. vinegar. Don't and drink. I, don't drink the rusty water. Don't don't drink. The, and then the rusty nails that are inside of it, and we leave that for about a month, and then we're ready to go. Yeah. Um, so so you're very familiar with that. Yeah. And then I use only use a tiny bit of it when I'm like a tablespoon when I put it in. Put it in a tablespoon at a time because it really has an impact. Well, that's the emphasis. Like I say, you don't need much, and you just put it in there for, you know, like seconds, really, and yeah. it really changes. You, yeah. you could leave it a little longer and get a much sure. darker. This almost looks like, this is amazing, because it almost looks like a deep, deep purple yeah. to me. Because yeah. if you think the reddishness of, of this one is quite reddish, um, and this turned into like a, a beautiful deep purple. But you can't, can you get... This is this is is leaning towards black. Yes, the reason I'm smiling is because I have an idea for another how-to class, and that is in um, getting black, achieving black. Because there's a number of ways you can yeah. achieve black. It black is difficult. And, it is. And so there are a number of ways to do that. So I want to explore various ways to get black. Yeah, we. I don't know if we talked about that in the past, or maybe briefly touched on it when we were talking about. Um, I think matter and Brazil wood and oh, my mind. I'm, we talked about it briefly because you know in the um, what it have been in the 1800s when when the upper classes developed and the middle classes and upper classes and and judges were prominent and and people of prominence wore black. Black was very um, what's yeah. the word like prized to get because it yeah. was a difficult color to achieve. Um, and much like the history of purple. But yes. Exactly. Yeah. So, but then black, it, it became like a popular color because it meant yes. you were like, you know, a judge, you a, it. Yeah. a lawyer, uh, somebody of, you know, think of men with tail coats and top hats and they're blacks. And it was really hard to get until they discovered uh, the process to an easy way with, you know, they were doing it with logwood or basically it's difficult to get. And what does it mean now black? that the anarchists have taken over black? Well, We've gone from the upper class that, to the anarchists. I don't think that black fashion lasted that long because when color was rediscovered, probably when color TV came out, it's like, let's not do black anymore. Hey, we can do color. <laughs> and then along came, and then boom, color so again. So one of the things Thank I wanted goodness. to mention about this is the other reason I like using avocados, I like the history of it. And so this is, I mean, the avocado goes back a, a long time in um, Mesoamerican history. And, and Mesoamerican, so, I asked her that question earlier because I, I think of Central America, maybe... South America, um, but the term exactly is from the regions of. Uh, oh yeah, you're pretty close. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, from Mexico to. Um, Guatemala, or, Costa Rica. Yeah. The, in in that general Colombia. area. Yeah. And Uruguay so. Uruguay to Peru. No, sorry. Ecuador. Sorry, not Uruguay. Ecuador to Peru. So anyway. <laughs> I talked to going it. back ten thousand. I think I talked to going back ten thousand years. It, what, the fascinating thing is that in um, archaeologists have found that in old fiber coming from llama and alpaca, there has been dye from the avocado. Oh, yes. Found in these textiles from way back when. Yes. Yep. Um, the other thing I want to mention is that it was also used as an ink. Wow. Um, so panic. And it was probably, I would say it was probably around this color. You think I would so? Imagine. Yeah. Well, yeah. But if you could get the darkness, do you think they could have got dark? I mean, ink, you wouldn't think of ink of having a color unless 
they you know they discovered that they wanted to correct a page and they wanted Reading to be able to mark their papers. You never know. You never know. <laughs> one uh, one other <coughs> me. thing that I had mentioned in the um, episode was the how-to episode was that when we look at our avocados, they look pretty much the same in every store. That's because ninety-five percent of them are Haas avocados. Oh, okay. Ninety-five percent of the ones that are consumed in North America are Haas avocados, and they come from California. Okay. And here's an interesting tidbit that I think you'd enjoy. Yeah. So it's H A S S. H A S S. The Haas avocado. So that's how we pronounce it, Haas avocado. Right. However, I was watch. I got the tea on this one. I was watching an episode on on YouTube where a guy is the son of the man who is managing the original Haas avocado tree. So the avocado tree was in the yard of a man with the last name Haas and this tree was despised because all of the derivatives or all of the Haas avocados that we get worldwide now, well not worldwide, but in Peru and Mexico and California are from this tree, are derivatives from this tree. Okay. So all the Haas avocados that you buy are from this tree. And so the interesting thing is that the tree died. And so the guy who has a piece of this tree is the son of the... There was actually a guy who managed the outside of the tree so people wouldn't destroy it. Okay. And Or he, he was a groundskeeper to take care of it. So he has a piece of it in his garage. And he was telling the interviewer that oh. Mr. Haas actually pronounced his name Haas. So for all these years, everyone's saying it incorrectly. <laughs> so who's right? Oh my Mr. Goodness. Haas or the Haas avocado? <laughs> and I could, I could tell you that the word avocado comes from... Um, an well, in, I, knew, I knew you were going to go in, the, the, the in that direction. Language. <laughs> and the meaning of the word um, is... The meaning of this word um, is, means testicle. Yeah, and so they must have had very large testicles back well, then. Well, for obvious reasons, <laughs> you know, the shape of the avocado. <laughs> <laughs> the fleshing of it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so the shape of the avocado, and of course there's a big nut inside. So, there you have There you it. go. A testicle. Well, and it's also known I to have been I am so glad you were able to, to contribute to this conversation. And it's also <laughs> known to have been an aphrodisiac, so that would, you know, that's where they go hand sure. in hand. Excellent. And also, um, you mentioned like they've been they've been around like in, as a food a staple of food yeah. for ten thousand years, but also about five thousand years ago, they were already beginning to be um, cultivated um, by the like Mayans, Mayans and Incas. Five thousand years ago, they were already cultivating the tree. Yeah. And domesticating it. Yeah, and the popularity of avocado has increased significantly. Um, and with, especially, people love avocado toast now. And so that's increased the demand. And um, Russia has also um, jumped onto the avocado bandwagon and it's, it's driving prices up. So <laughs> I know all about the avocado toast because this one here has been dyed with avocado. So every morning's <laughs> like, where's my avocado toast? <laughs> I, I, I need my avocado toast. I'm like, oh my gosh, avocado toast. <laughs> Okay. Anyway, that anyway, is that. And the, oh, did you want to say more? About yeah, that? there's a little bit more. About okay, the okay, sorry. I'll have my tea break. Yeah, and you go ahead. You mentioned you mentioned you know the Spanish using it as 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 ink. So as we know, the Spanish explorers in the 16th century came to South America. So they were the first to sort of the first Europeans to sort of discover or taste the avocado, and they were the first to then have them. They brought them back with them to Europe. You mean? And, you're saying the first, like the first... Europeans. Euro okay, yes. Right? Yeah. And then they were the first as well to then ship them off and, or brought them back to, to Europe where they, they then sure. you know, became popular. And then in the United States, they were introduced in the early 1800s into Florida, California, and Hawaii. And so, um, yeah, and they developed from there. And it wasn't until the 1960s that they became very popular because now they discovered you could put these on salads. And because they were called the alligator pear at the time because of the skin and the look of them, and they're really wrinkly and yeah. look like an alligator skin, um, they kept that name. Well, they called them an, an avocado pear even into well into the 60s. Oh. So some people from that time were I wasn't around there to an there. avocado pear. Well, that was before <laughs> my time. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah way, before. <laughs> way before my time. So the avocado, sometimes they called them the avocado pear, but I think most people now just know them have an avocado. Yeah. And then there's also all of the health benefits. So if you buy an avocado and then you decide to die with them, they're very good for the antioxidants. They're high in a ton of vitamins, including yeah. vitamin C, vitamin E, vitamin B. 
and they help uh, produce collagen so to have beautiful skin I like to just take is it. that why you have avocado that's mask. why you always see me with the avocado mask it's like <laughs> Jamie where's my avocado toast and there I am with the avocado on my face um, yeah this one doesn't where's my avocado toast <laughs> I'm all about having beautiful skin <laughs> that's funny okay are we done with the dye pot <laughs> or is there anything else you want to add <laughs> that's the secret folks avocado okay. facial masks <laughs> Okay, why don't we get into, we have a whip and an A-whip, but I'm really interested in the A-whip, so why don't we talk about that? Are we going to start with my A-whip? Yes. Okay, I'm going to tell you what the A-whip is. So, the A-whip that I was going to talk about begins here with this, because it's the almost work in progress. Now, here's the dilemma. I don't want to get any of this on this precious wool. I'm moving this over just in case. Okay, so I have these amazing skeins of yarn and I've been- I'll hold them up while you talk. I've been waiting- um, Cause you often need your hands to talk. Well, I need those to talk about it. I can't, I feel like I'm- Okay, okay so um, I have these skeins of yarn and I want to knit a sweater and I've never knit a sweater before and I have these images in mind of what I'd like to have. There's two of them. This one in particular, I love this yarn. And so I'm asking if anyone out there has an idea or any ideas on something that would be a very good beginner sweater. I don't know if there's an easy version of a sweater, but if there's one easier than the, the next, then I'm thinking maybe people could send me ideas. Excellent. And so what I have here, um, these three here are Gotland, and we've talked about Gotland before, several times, because one of my sweaters is Gotland, and I absolutely love it. So here you have two of the natural Gotland colors. You have this beautiful gray, this beautiful cream, and this one that you dyed, which is absolutely my favorite, uh, because it's Gotland with indigo, and it has this look of denim, almost. So if you put the combination of these two together, absolutely stunning. Then you're going to introduce um, the cream. So if you introduce the cream with them, I would like to have some kind, I think I'm thinking some kind of a cream border here, cream border, cream, gray fading into the blue. And then this, of course, is another one of your colors. I want to introduce the pink into the gray because I think that's... And where's the gray? Amazing combination. Where's the gray going? The gray is going to be, the top part is going to be sure. gray yeah. to about here. Yeah. And then I want to incorporate just, just a hint of the pink across the chest. Okay. That's going to give it a pop because I just love that combination. Then it's going to, then it's going to blend into the blue and then the cream on the one third, let's say bottom is going to be cream and cream on the sleeves and it's going to be stunning. So what you're looking for is suggestions on a yeah. beginner's sweater. Yes. And these and and so do you want like a raglan sleeve or what kind of sleeve well, do you want? I don't know. I I I like my one sweater that I don't know what to call the sleeves that sort of go here like this mm -hmm. across the top is there a name for that type of sleeve? But then the raglan you have them where you have stitching across here and the rounded shoulders where you just continue to continue from here over down. Yeah. Um, either or. I don't know which one would be. I don't know which one would be. Okay. Simpler. Well, or they could be equally the same. There's maybe no shortcut. Or, I'm not looking for a shortcut. I'm looking for a simpler way to knit a sweater. Sure. And so basically, yeah, like a basic probably raglan sweater or or another pattern. Um, I'll figure out. I'll figure out. You know the color combinations. I just need to know how to knit the sweater. And when I get into the the arms or the body of it, I'm just going to add, I'm just going to switch yarns, which I could easily do. I just and you have enough yarn do. for this? Yes, I do. Okay. Definitely enough. Excellent. I am a size medium, so I need about how many skeins? I'd say probably, well, it depends on how long. Eight or ten? Yarn. Yeah, eight, eight to ten. Eight to ten. Yeah, I think you've got And I have, I have, the fewest I have are the blue, but that's just going to be an accent. Okay. Excellent. So if you have any suggestions? For my A-whip. For Jamie's A whip, so he can turn his A whip into, into a, a whip. F O, not even a whip. Well, no, you have to go to a whip first, and then no. you go to the F O. I want to just jump straight to the F O. <laughs> and are you going to swatch Magically. on this sweater? Oh gosh, no. <laughs> 
So then I might get the sweater. Gonna be, if, it's, if it's too small for you, then I, I'm I might very, I, I pay very <laughs> fine um, to fine detail. I pay attention to fine detail, and I, I like to take my time and I just follow and structurally do it once and do it right the first time around. And structurally, excellent. <laughs> I can shoot the map. <laughs> there it is. Okay, so Done. I have an FO and a whip. A real FO and a real whip. Yeah, so which one do you want to see? Oh. And I'll give you, okay, so just to help your, your choice, the whip is also a cow. Well, we're talking about whips, so why don't we go into the whip? Oh, the cow. The cow. And I keep thinking you're saying cow, but I know that you don't know. No, that's my Scarborough accent. Oh, gosh. It's a cow, not a cow. My and cow. And along. That's what it is. A knit along. Yeah. How okay. is that? How is that part of terminology? A cow. Who's knitting along? If you're by yourself knitting. Because you do it. There's this something called the internet, and, <laughs> and and people will work on a project together. Oh, so you mean it's because every time you join the group, you're going to be knitting. You've been knitting the same thing each time, so it's your cow. Yeah. This one is slightly different. This has the same theme. This knit along. Um, oh, I see. So, so, okay, let's look at my whip. Okay. And my cowl. The cowl, which. The knit along. Yes. Oops. You're losing your balls. I'm losing my balls everywhere. It's hanging around by my. It's hanging around my ankle. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Get a grip on those balls. <laughs> Mister. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> let's talk about this. Oh my god. Okay. I was on a knit night, and one of the guys on the knit night, we sit around and we talk about what we're knitting, and he said and that. And then other things. And then, and then other things too. Hear things. Yeah, but what happens in knit night stays in knit night, except for this. Because I, I, I can share this. Well. Because it's a group activity. A group activity. You got to cackle the guys together and. Sure. No different chatting with a cackle of girls. <laughs> okay, I'll leave that one up to you. So anyway, back to the cow. So I'm on a, I'm participating in the knit night. And so we're asking each other what we're knitting. And one guy said, I am knitting a hat. Okay. And I'm part of a knit along. I said, well, what knit along is it? And he said, it is hashtag level up 2021. Love, love it. Level um, up? Level up. Um, I thought you said love a lot. Level, it's my accent. Level up. Okay. 2021. And so. Exactly like 90210. It's, yes, it's exactly like that. And so I asked, you know, what is that all about? And he said, it's a knit along that Caleb from Drowning in Yarn has started. And it's really to. Um, tries a new technique that you haven't tried before and you can do it in a hat because the hat's a small small enough project okay so then I thought that was a great idea so I went on to Caleb's website and checked out his YouTube channel and then also checked out his Instagram and then I fired him a note and I said Caleb what's up with the with the knit along um, I'm participating in it now and where did you get the inspiration for this and so he said that he was wanted to try a different knitting techniques and he was trying swatches okay. and then he thought well once you finish like 10 swatches you got what do you have what do you have out of that you have 10 swatches yeah unless you want to if didn't you, you talk about this before no about but well i did i talked about swatches, swatches I, I mean if you want to knit a harry styles card oh, again we're not they, going back to harry are we <laughs> they, right i knew it was clicking in it all goes back to harry wait there so was, yeah there was, what you do with all unless these? you do that or a blanket or something like that. So he thought, you know, why don't we use a hat? And, and a lot of his viewers uh, also said that they were interested in new techniques and some of them are afraid to, to do it. So this is the perfect So it became a perfect thing. hat of many colors. If we're No, he about, didn't. No, he scrapped the, the idea. The numerous swatches. He scrapped the idea of the swatches. Oh. And he decided to do the hat because you can try different techniques on the hat. Okay. And so Caleb decided to do the Vold hat. V O L D. Vold. Yeah. Oh, so. It's By Jean Pierre. No, Jean Philippe uh, Cliche. Cliche. Yeah. Is it Cliche? Well, his website has 
an accent over the last e, but everything else does not have the accent. Unclear. So it, cliche, atelier cliche. So atelier cliche but, has that. But I don't. I can't. Well, is it that because? I but but his last name does not have that. Just be clear. So Jean Philippe Cliche. Okay, because th uh, from what we know and what you know is there's nowhere near that it would be cliche, and I don't think you would call yourself cliche. No. Well, we're gonna. We'll ask him. Okay. So, actually, <laughs> he's Clich, only in the next province over. Jean-Philippe Jean Clich. He's probably about three, two and a half hours away from here. So oh, really? we'll, we'll Yeah. Have we been there? No. Or that's another one that we're no, supposed but to do on he's a tour a, to Ontario. No, no, no. Yeah. Well, that's but that's in Quebec. He's in the next province over. <laughs> oh, is that where Quebec is? Thanks okay. So Quebec. back to the project. So anyway, um, I thought, why don't I do this? Why don't I? Why don't I try this? <laughs> Am I taking over yeah, too much? Yeah, you're, like, you're practically sitting on my lap. It's like, you're like this, and I'm like, I keep trying to go like that, and then you're, I don't know what, he's trying to push me out of the camera. <laughs> See, it's all about, what? Soon he'll be back to... That is not true. Oh. I, I thought this would be a great opportunity to do a hat and learn a new technique. technique. And so this one is in Tarja, in the round. Like I've Tarja? <laughs> It's from Target, folks. Yeah, yeah. I bought. <laughs> it's not like I got my, <laughs> It's my knitting skill from Target, the store Target. No, it's in Tarja, and so in Tarja oh, is very much. Okay. It's the same terminology that you use in woodworking, where you got an inlay of a different color. So it's you're oh. taking multiple colors and uh, putting them together, basically. And so uh, that's what I'm doing with this hat, which I've just started, and also I'll have that finished shortly. Well, it looks like it's almost. Is it close to being done? Yeah, not too far away. Yeah, I love that color combination so you can you're supposed to use four colors but i chose to use three. was there a choice a choice to use three or four yes you can use three or four i guess and so anyway yeah. that's that's so i've joined this um or i'm doing this and and i was inspired by the by the middle long and i thought what a great a great opportunity to learn a new so skill. is this caleb's is this his middle long project while one of these yeah caleb's already finished one of these um, and his looks fantastic. Okay. So check it out on his Instagram. Um, what, did, what did you use? What did I use for this? Thank you for asking because I would have forgot to mention that. And it's really important to measure the to mention well, the wool when you're knitting with it. Well, absolutely because so, I know they're your colors. Yeah. So this one is the acorn that I that I used, or the oak. Um, this one oak. is birch that I used, and oh. and this one is indigo. Okay. So we'll see how that what that looks like when yeah, I yeah. This is up. this is beautiful like. It's a view like gold. It's kind of like a gold brown. Yeah. And then this one, because I don't know if you can see that, is a beautiful pale gray. So that gives a really nice contrast with the blue and the oak. And the oak's going to be available soon because you you've been dying with oak for a while. We talked about it. Yeah. So. Yes. Yeah. It'll be available soon. It will be. And so you've learned what a K A L is now. A, a K A L. A cow, not a cowl. I do want to mention one other thing about Caleb. And his, I, I binged watched a number of his episodes, and he, on a, one of them, he talks about um, yarn, and he goes into great detail on specific yarns, okay. and talks about the price point on them, and just the way they feel and drape and all that stuff. And it's, I thought he did a fantastic job, and he does the same thing with books. He talks about certain books that he he likes. So right. check that out. It's I found it really interesting. I watched a little bit of, of Caleb with you. Yes, you did. But yep. Christopher was having a Jamie who moment so i just let him do his thing and carry on with the it's videos <laughs> anyway that is my whip and knit along cal. yeah so i knit it my cow will be finished one right. day i'll have a knit along if i only had some friends <laughs> well keep asking keep asking out there for friends and i'm sure you'll well, get if some. i knit a little more often um i might gain new well, friends well you have a new cooking friend you have a new, you have to do a knit along <laughs> with foggy bottoms boys i'm gonna try to i mean hey, i cook along with them i'm gonna i'm gonna say if we if we do like a, a zoo in zoomlandia instead of a knit along we might have a knit along cook along i think there'll be a lot of people interested in your a knit along cook along with uh yeah a knit along cook along with the foggy bottoms boys yeah yep who knows Anything's stranger possible. things have happened okay are we ready to look at the fo What's the FO? He always likes to use those. Where I'm, where Do you remember what this is called? It's called a finished object. <laughs> I'm not sure what side is which. Oh my gosh, I don't think there's a side crystal. I can't remember what side is crystal. which. Crystal. <laughs> <laughs> I just call you crystal. <laughs> so. Okay, there's no side, it's a circle. <laughs> what? 
No, there was a seam that I was trying to close. I mean, that I closed. Okay, well, if you can't see it, neither, <laughs> neither can they. <laughs> anyway, so here it is. Um, oh my gosh. You don't have enough room for me. Oh, there it is. I think I'm just going to do this. I'm going to want to do this while. Can I do this while you're talking? <laughs> yeah, you can do this. So I finished it, and it was a lot of fun to knit along with by myself. <laughs> I had my Why own knit along. Yeah, you, this is not a cow because you didn't do a knit along, but did I you know. knit along at times? So it's this? really, um, I, I, I like this. It's, it's great. So it turned is, out beautifully. This is what it looks like in the book. If the yeah, oh, it looks just like in the book, doesn't it? I think and mine we, looks bigger. And you, it's bigger and thicker. It definitely is. <laughs> but you know what, how many you, you how many, stuffed it? So what? So like, what do you think I stuffed it with, and how much? I know because never mind. I there's at least used, I think you used a little bit of fleece. There is um, pillow stuffing in here. I, two and a half pillows at least. Wow. And then I had some um, fleece from, wasn't fleece though, it was... No, it's just a fiber. Combed, yeah, fiber yeah, from fiber. Upper Canada Village. Was one of them the dog? <laughs> and then I ran out, I was, I was about here, and I ran out, and I thought, and that's, <laughs> so there's dog hair in here. Because you said, I don't know. I and it's not Zan's was dog it, hair. Was it Louise from, yes. Louise yes. gave us that, and you said... I think this is dog, and it's like I'm thinking. Well, we use it at the door where Zan likes to curl up because he cools down. Yes. But now you're you're blocking that beautiful coolness of a draft that Zan so appreciates. But then he's cozying up so against he's, he's with befriended dog the yeah. um what was this called again? We went over this last time. The draft stopper. At uh, the draft stopper. Yeah, and Let's, is and, that what it's called? And Zan is yes. now. I think it's Zan's new best friend. Yeah. And that is the explanation because I didn't know or remember that you said you finished it off with a little bit of the dog fiber. <laughs> it was super soft and fluffy. Yeah. yeah. So that's it. And, and I really like it. It's, it's great. Yeah. The colors are incredible. And I mean, the pattern, everything about it is a fantastic pattern. And you know, I always look at this and think, oh gosh, that the, the intricacies of it all. Um, but you know, for any average knitter, you could take this yep. Carlos and um, Carlos's pattern and go ahead and knit this. Yep, absolutely. Okay, Car Arnie and Carlos. Arnett and Carlos. Who? Arnett. <laughs> okay, let's talk about what's coming up. Uh, what What is coming up? Indy Across the Pond is coming up in a couple of weeks. Oh, is that like, oh yes, that's like Indy Untangled. Yep, except it's Across the Pond. Okay. And it's the 19th to the 21st. And yep. so we are gonna be there um, as shoppers. Oh, so like, it's like a, a visit, an adventure. It's a, an adventure. And the thing I get excited about with these festivals, I get a little bit excited, or a lot, a lot of bit excited, Yeah, is that there, you meet new people that you've never met before, or new, ven, new vendors that you've never met before. Yeah, we've already done a couple of virtual uh, virtual appearances, um, showing up at these these events, and they're they're fantastic. It's as good as it gets yeah. right now. So the, the way that this is going to work is it's, uh, five bucks, and then you get access to the marketplace, and there's a tea time at lunch too. So I'll oh, definitely wow. be there. I love tea times. Well, <laughs> and five dollars. I yep. mean, jeepers! Everybody should be all over that. Yeah, absolutely. And there's usually a limit to these things, so if anybody's interested, they should sort of get on it. So yeah. What is the the tea time? What is that all like? What does that mean? You spill the tea. <laughs> no, you get to network. So you, you get can to meet network. Other people. So there's a, a, a period where maybe you do take like a lunch break or something. And, yeah. And then yeah. you just yeah, you and just like shoot the breeze. Yeah. And so, and then there's also going to be two uh, lectures as well. Okay. And th I think that those have separate prices on them. One's on Saturday, one's on Sunday. And one of them is Melanie Berg, who is from Germany, who a lot of people associate with amazing shawls. She's really, okay. really talented. Um, she, she's awesome. And then the other person is uh, Sylvia Watts Cherry. And she is awesome. She we were talking about Intarsia earlier today. Yes. She is one of the queens of Intarsia. Some oh. of her sweaters, you would definitely know her sweaters if you saw them. Uh, a lot of it's inspired by African culture and it's just gorgeous. And she's out of the UK. And so, have you seen these oh, well, we, before? Yeah, we absolutely have. When I we thought were at, so. Yeah, when we were at, uh, I can't remember if it was Vogue or Rhinebeck last year people were wearing her sweaters and so okay. that's really exciting and she loves color as well and so she's really well, exciting. Well I remember the one with the scenery. 
Yeah, yeah, the the village. I think it was called the village. Right. That's really nice. You, you would have pointed that out. And yeah. It, it would have stood out as well. Yeah. You and notice the, you notice one of the sweater that looks like that is yeah. amazing. And then the other is the marketplace, and so okay. we're going to be participating in the marketplace by participating as in going to see as many as, as possible. In, as in going shopping. <laughs> and, and I like so, how he puts it. Like, <laughs> we're just going to participate in the marketplace. You know what that means, folks. And so, and so the first thing I thought when I when I, was going shopping. when I saw this, I just thought to myself, well, it's over in the UK, so am I going to have to wake up at two o'clock mm. in the morning to, oh, right. to go shopping? Is that 12, we will. Is we it, do not have to do that. I think shopping starts I uh, uh, at ten o'clock in the morning, so Eastern time. Okay. And but I'll have to check the website. I'll put a link to that so we see it. Uh, but there, I went through my list as I do for every festival. Yes. I was going to see who the vendors are, who I definitely have to see. And I'd say that all, there's so many of them are, look fantastic. There were a couple that caught my eye right away. Okay. And I'm not going to do a full story in any of these. We'll do that after after we participate. But okay. a couple of them that caught my eye, and I have to look at my notes because I can't, I wasn't able to pronounce them. Well, but I, one of them is Fable Knitwear. Um, her website is amazing. And she has a really interesting story as well. Okay. What's so, the story? Well, you have to check her about section the way she presents herself uh, okay. but her when the thing i love about her website is you definitely know what her yarn is all about because it's so beautifully reflected it's so okay. it's so nice it's really really nice and the thing i like about this virtual this virtual tour is that you know if we were at one of the events in person his routine of going to down his list checking off the hundred that he wants to see, whittling down to ninety nine. Then you do a tour of the <laughs> entire, the entire venues, but just to have a little look see, and then go back to the ones he actually really wants, which is now whittled down to maybe ninety eight. <laughs> and then we do all of them. So this is saving you, a well, lot of. You, but you forgot an important step. Legwork. You forgot a very important step. The important step that you you have to when you're there physically, you have to take a picture of the booth because, uh, <laughs> or the booth number because you'll forget because. There is just, there's so many, sometimes there's so many buildings and well, it's always you never remember of, where it is. Well, it's always kind of funny because you'll say, okay, I'm going to come back to that. So, you know, you go through, you do the visual, you do this quick squish test. Then it's like move along because you're very excited to get to the next booth. And, uh, and then we circle back. But that's what it's all about. And, you know, I'm just saying that. But yeah, but I you mean, forgot the conversations. We usually have, okay, this is the real version of the story. Okay. We usually get into conversations. This is true. And it takes us a couple hours just to get out of the first building. That's <laughs> right. And then you're scrambling towards the end to get to where you want That's to go. That's right. We always run wanna, out of time. And then you want to get back to the ones that you really loved. Yeah. It. And sometimes, you know, even the ones over there, you want to meet a lot of these vendors and a lot of people you're, you know, fans of and you want to meet them. Um, and they're they're just as busy. Yeah. They're busy chatting with other fans of theirs or people of in, who are so interested right. in their products. So to catch someone actually available to chat with, you will say, okay, let's come back. She's busy. He's busy. We'll come back around and chat. And of course we do because we want to meet, meet yeah. these people. Have you ever been to Genoa, Italy? I've been to Italy, but not Genoa. Um, I've eaten Genoa salami. Is that the same thing? For, yes, sure it is. So Laniv Dole, I'm crucifying the name, Laniv Dole is another one out of Genoa, Italy, and they source their fiber um, within close, close proximity to Genoa, and it's milled and dyed all in the same area. And what, do you know what kind of fleece that would be? It, yeah, it's Italian or? fleece. <laughs> We're going to have to, it's we'll beautiful. tell you that the next episode. It's absolutely stunning because <laughs> it looks anything gorgeous. Italian, oh, it's Italian, <laughs> you know it's going to be stunning and luxurious. And then the next uh, one that caught my eye was River Knits. And oh, that sounds fun. The, well, it sounds even better when you read their story. Okay. And they left their engineering jobs what? and opened up a dyeing business on their boat. Wow, <laughs> River Knits. I'm yeah. gonna go there. Yeah, it sounds great. And Is they it... use British um, fleece uh, for their for their dyeing, and so it'll be fun to. But we're gonna we're gonna check it as many that's as we can. Really but those are just three that caught my eye right away. I wonder if the boat stays stationary. Or who's our local person that comes to festivals in her truck? Um, I'm just oh yeah, thinking of the it's... yarn. Yeah, you mean the, the the van that's full of yarn? Is that what you're talking about? Who are you talking the about? The truck that has a yarn vendor. She has a truck and she goes to you with her truck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, van. She's out of Kingston. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I didn't know if it was a van or a truck. <laughs> what does it matter? The vehicle, we've seen them. No, because I thought and it was so, part of her name. No, I, I don't. Oh, you were trying to think of the name. Yes. No. Okay. 
all that was going to say is it like that where is this boat going down the river because no, uh, all no, through no. europe i mean there yeah are they, they, you can get they, from, they, from the <laughs> south of england through we're going to be at lift lock number so, 12 at well you could 2 30 if anyone's interested in buying yarn i mean <laughs> the incredible uh you know the incredible canal ways throughout parts of europe you yeah. could definitely go from location to location on yeah. your boat but is well, it stationary? okay so rather than asking me the question what we're going to do is we're, we're going to watch them and, and we'll maybe them. we'll be asking we'll you can ask, ask them, them directly the <laughs> so okay so that's that festival so we're really excited about that and then the last thing is i wanted to thank everyone for all of your suggestions on interviews uh, oh yes we've lined up uh, a number of interviews for for this year a few so far Yes, and going from the East Coast to the West Coast. We're all the way in Newfoundland, um, Quebec, Ontario, Mid. and BC. We're still going to fill in the the middle provinces. So just like just like Canada, from sea to shining sea. From she from she to shining from sea to shining sea. Say that three times fast. <laughs> I do want to also mention that I was really impressed and touched by some of the comments there was especially the people that are uh, the viewers that are outside of canada who really wanted to see canadian designers and uh, learn more about mm -hmm. what's going on in canada i was really touched by that it was it was super nice uh, and I, it was a proud moment i felt very yeah. proud yeah some of the, some of the um the one that had i mean uh, practically a whole story of how she felt about her videos and, and some yeah. of it, it becomes quite personal it's oh yeah for it's sure unbelievable the yeah. way um people open up and and it was such truth and honesty and yeah. they really you really feel what they're saying and it, it it is very touching and we we love to get that and absolutely it's it's inspiring I, I mean we say it over and over again but it truly is inspiring and it yeah. it's such a feel-good thing um to hear to hear from all of you it really is it's really encouraging and and it's all been very wonderful. Yeah, and so for the interviews, what we'll do is we've got a number of Canadians lined up, and we're also going to do some international as well because um, I think it's it's great to bring that audience too to the viewers as well. Some of the people that we've met yeah. up, um, along our travels, and I think it's interesting too because thinking it through, there there are a lot of there's so many artisans out there. Oh, and for sure, well known artisans and little known yeah. artisans, and so there's not really a, a criteria that we're saying, but some of these some of these uh, more unknowns is it'd be fun to bring them to Absolutely. the forefront. Say, hey, have you heard of this person? And some of you have said, hey, have you thought about this? And person? that's what I love too, because some of them and, I've never heard of before. Yeah, so and that so was that's, great, and that's to bring them to the forefront because, like, wow, look at what he or she is doing, yeah. and and you go from what they are doing and. Um, yeah, that's what it's going to be about. I guess the bottom line, though, is I'm super excited about the people who've said yes so far. So, and we haven't had anybody say no yet. Well, that's, so that's because we're, we're being very careful. Like, please. And we're like, okay, do we ask them? Do we not? We mentioned that last time. If they really would. Okay, you know. be honest. We have no problem asking. So, <laughs> yeah, we can ask. All they're going to say is, like I said last time, yeah, no thanks, but thank you, but no thanks. Anyway. So we haven't met that yet, so thank no. goodness. But I just wanted to, again, thank everyone for your comments. Love the comments. I just wanted to remind you that Jamie has a plea out there for help. A plea? On his, was that for my on cow? His, on his sweater. <laughs> no, not that. your cow. It's your A-whip. You are almost. You want to make that A, you want to remove that A and start a whip. So he's looking for anyone to provide suggestions on yes. a beginner sweater. And the cow is because I did put a little, a little bit of a slit in there that I, you know, some knit along friends would be. Sure. <laughs> anyway, have a fantastic week. Uh, we enjoyed sharing our these stories with you and look to sharing more with you as well. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. See you next time.